Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we're going to talk about the old Italian man way of propagating fig trees. The story goes is that my grandfather came over to the house one day. We didn't know what he was doing. He's a crazy man. He's Italian and he had some sticks with him, like three foot long branches. Stuck them in the ground. And uh, little did we know those sticks turn into fig trees. And um, that's just the method that I've been using now for two years. It's not the only method I use. We do a lot of indoor rooting. We drive ourselves a little crazy. But if I were to take a, a nice long branch, let's take this tree as an example. This is about two or three foot long. If I were to cut this off, stick this in the ground in the spring, I'd have myself a pretty well established tree by this time of the year. Now that we're in late October, our frosts are coming in and we're going to be uh, going dormant soon. But you can see, I want to show you guys the results. We showed you guys the results last year. We did very few cuttings last year. We had great success. These are younger, smaller cuttings, cuttings with less energy. The longer the cutting, the thicker the cutting, the bigger the tree will be at the end of the season. It's just, uh, it's just a fact, you know, um, if you have yourself, let's say a nine inch cutting, pencil thickness, it's gonna root, it's gonna do well, it's gonna grow that season, but it's probably not gonna turn into the tree that you're hoping for, like some of these large trees here. It may take a bit, a couple seasons after you put that cutting in the ground, it may take a while for that thing to adapt, to adjust. I wanna show you some other trees in here, this little jungle that I've pretty much created, is that we've come in here and we've actually chopped a lot of our trees to the base this one here is called Blanche de Du Cezanne, and you can see the base. I'm going to show you guys the base here, where we made this cut, right down in here. Really difficult to see. Sorry guys, there's so many leaves. Let me take some of these out of here. But there's the base. We made a big cut right there, and the tree was like three foot tall, and I stuck actually, I think, two cuttings in the ground. Here's one of one of the Blanche de Du Cezanne cuttings. We just stuck it in the ground right next to the tree. Oh, here's another one right there. And you can see there's not a whole lot of growth off of this, but that's still a tree. And I imagine it has probably not the best roots, but pretty decent. Here's the other one. You can see it actually has some fruit on it. Definitely won't ripen in time, but that's pretty good results. It's a lot of growth right there. That's probably a foot and a half of new growth. We did the same thing over in other, with other trees. We chopped them all back and stuck them in the ground. Here you can see some back in here. I'm a little bit in the, in the shadows here, but here's a, a, a Black Beauty 10. Again, we did the same thing. We came in here at the base and chopped all these trees back and stuck in cuttings. And I would say on average, we've got ourselves about a foot and a half on some of these cuttings. You know, if they weren't shaded out, nearly as much as they are. I'm sure the results would be even better. I want to show you guys some other trees that we have that I think have even better results. My wire is getting stuck here in all these trees. Let's see if we can get out of this mess. All right, sorry for the shakiness, guys. Let's keep going. I want to give you guys a tip, too. If uh, you guys live in a colder climate like I do, and it's just too harsh in the wintertime, a lot of your trees take damage or take total damage, it's a really good idea to protect these trees in the wintertime. Get them through this one season. I'll show you exactly what I mean in just a minute. But we have over here a campaneri. And this is, again, a cutting we just stuck in the ground. You can see here's the top of the cutting. And it took from that top node. And that's it. Actually, we had a, a node down here. Um, it, didn't, it had growth here, but it broke off. Luckily, this top node was pretty strong. But here's the issue is that if this tree were to take some severe damage, it's not gonna come back from the roots. There's no buds for the most part. It's very likely there, there's no buds underneath a lot of these trees. So we're gonna have to find some way to protect these, these trees. In fact, a lot of our young, newly planted trees that we rooted as cuttings inside as well. I'll give you a little difference here. Oh, the tree on the right is a cutting that we rooted indoors and planted it out in the spring. The tree on the left is a tree that we planted uh, just a cutting. We just stuck a cutting in the ground. 
you know, like a, an eight inch long cutting. Of course they vary in different sizes. You can see all these down here. We're basically just stuck in the ground as cuttings. Here's another one, a black Celeste. It's got about nine inches of new growth, just stuck in the ground. I would say the success rate is really the big thing here. Demos unknown. Actually, that one I think we rooted indoors, but not a whole lot of it. It wasn't very strong when I transplanted it out into the ground. Same thing over here. Here's a, a pastelier. We just stuck these, studding, these cuttings in the ground. We have some, this variety here failed. This is the pink honey that some of you guys may have gotten last year. And this is a godfather. We stuck some godfather cuttings in the ground and they all grew. I think the success rate of this method is very high, um, without a doubt. It's just that you're gonna have to probably protect them the first year if you live in a colder place. They may not get to the exact size that you want, but in six months of growing, I think that's pretty reasonable for a cutting to get to this size. I think that's really awesome. I had some trees last year that were of three foot long cuttings and they did way better than the trees that I'm showing you guys right now. Let's see if I have any others over here. I've even done this at different parts of the season. I've said, you know what? It's July, let me throw these cuttings in the ground and see what happens. And as a result, you can see some of them actually have taken. This is one down in here. It's kind of getting shaded. But here's a Demos cutting that we just stuck in the ground. Pretty late. Um, you know, I really tried to graft some of these and the grafting this year didn't go all that well. So I had some leftover wood and I just I stuck it in the ground. If I come over here, this is a Bergen unknown. This guy down here, look how much that grew. Just from planting this in July, I tried planting most of them out um, horizontally, kind of like you would plant sugar cane in a trench, uh, rather than just sticking the cutting down like I normally have. And that seems to work pretty well, but not always uh, applicable. But most of these other cuttings in here were rooted cuttings I had inside. Really not the strongest trees, still aren't. And as a result, I'm gonna have to come in here and really we're gonna chop all these trees down to about six inches to a foot and cover the whole thing and make sure it's all insulated well. So that's just some of the steps, guys. Those are the results. Um, I have some other ones. I don't think I have any that were really spectacular, but you know, they're, it's pretty impressive. It's, it's a really successful uh, method, as I said. And I think it's worth a shot. I think it's a lot less hassle. You really just plant the thing and that's it. You know, if you got yourself two or three cuttings, you're guaranteed, I would say, you're guaranteed to have that variety um, successfully root for you. Assuming the cuttings are, are, have gotten through the winter time in the fridge all right and everything looks great. So anyway, guys, that's this one. We'll see you for tomorrow's video. Take care, guys.